I just want to give you a short company introduction. Um, some of the participants are sales partners of us, others are end customers, just to give you some background information about the company. So we were founded in 2002 and the founders were Christian Schult and Wolfgang Blessing. The company has grown since 2002 and right now we are about 85 people employed in Germany and about 20 also worldwide in our foreign subsidiaries. And we've got two locations, one in South Germany and one in North Germany. I'm sitting pretty much here. So in the location of South Germany, um, we are responsible for the development of the products and the production. And in North Germany, um, a lot of business is done taking care of customs. The flow and dew point sensors get recalibrated. So in the Corona virus, it was quite a fortunate situation. So, the, so that we had two different locations and yeah, we have been able to deliver our products all over the time and we didn't have any interference until yet, fortunately. So we are, we started as a German company and because compressed air and gases are used worldwide, um, we are internationalizing and year by year um, new subsidiaries get found and by now we are present in the most relevant markets as you can see here on the slide and in countries where we don't have a subsidiary yet there we work together with external sales partners and yeah today we are talking about the leak detection Florian my colleague he already spoke about dew point and about flow measurement and I just want to give you a short overview about what CS Instruments does generally. So we provide solutions for you to measure the efficiency of compressors. So that means you can measure the power or the current of the compressor and measure the actual produced um, flow and therefore calculate the specific power that we will talk about a little bit later. Then that is the part where we originally come from, the dew point measurement and we also offer um, oil measurement and particle measurement as well as flow measurement which goes very good hand in hand with the leak detection and the topic for today which is obviously leak detection and let's right dive into it. So in the beginning I want to give you some theoretical fun, uh, fundamenta fund fundamentals about compressed air leak detection. Then I want to go right into how to use the LD500 and the CS leak software in the most efficient way. And that is by um, defining the parameter once in the beginning. Then the next step is always to find the leaks, obviously, to quantify and document them. And then when leak, all leaks are, are found, then to ex export them into the CS leak report software and there the data can be edited and reports can be generated. And the last part I want to talk um, briefly about the combination between flow measurement and leakage data and how both their measurements can benefit from each other if the user combines them. So the first thing I want to show is the cost distribution of compressed air systems. Um, pretty much all the compressed air dealers, they are aware of that. But still it's good to see. So if the total cost of compressed air systems is 70.3% um, yeah, of it is energy, then buying new equipment, which is about 20%, is sensible if the energy efficiency of the compressors is increased or the general electricity um, electricity consumption decreased. So they're investing in new efficient equipment and tools to decrease yeah, the, the used cubic meters or cubic feet is sensible and then there's also a portion of about 7% which is used for maintenance. So there was one study done and there was checked um, which potentials uh, most participants in the compressed air market see and named by everyone was um, reducing the leakage rate which is basically wastage 
Also other recommendations to decrease the energy consumption is to avoid unnecessary pressure drops. For example, if a filter is blocked, then to exchange them so that the delta P is not getting too high because then the compressors need to work harder to maintain the pressure on the demand side. Then to decrease the pressure of the compressed air system generally. Most machines, they only require six bar. And if you have um, applications where you need a higher pressure, there you should use booster compressors to deliver there the higher pressure level. But yeah, bringing up the pressure for all applications, that is not really sensible. And then on the supply side, um, it is uh, a good thing to install or to optimize the con compressor compo control system and to install a heat recovery for bigger compressors, for example, so that it can be used for yeah, for heating up water, for example, so that the energy is not wasted. And generally, the approach is, the, fir the first thing should be to decrease the consumption of compressed air as far as possible, and then to optimize the compressed, compressed air production, the supply side, because the compressors, they are specified for certain flow rates, and if they're used out of their specification, then they can also become inefficient. So that's always important to then check if, yeah, or how the compressor system can be operated so that it delivers the needed air at the lowest energy cost. Then I want to show you yeah, some basic data, how you can kind of quantify the pot potential of your customer or your, if you are the end customer, then how high the potential could be. So the one relevant um, number is for sure the compressor capacity that is installed, which is basically an elect electric engine or an electric motor, and then compress the compressed air. Then the operating hours are critical. So how long is your system under pressure? That can be sensible to cut off the compressed air supply to to certain departments if they are not, if there is nothing being produced anyways. And in this example here, we assumed um, there's one screw compressor running, eventually one for redundancy, and they are idling, but yeah, in that case, it's 100 kilowatts. We have operating hours throughout the year, so it's the system is under pressure all day. And we did a power measurement, and we measured that the average power consumption is 80 kilowatts. And then the next critical um, number is the electricity price. So in that case here, we assumed 10 and you know, 0.1 per kilowatt hour, which is different for each country pretty much, but just as a number. And then the compressed air energy costs would account $70,000 per year approximately. And if you guess a leak or a typical leak leakage rate of um, old plants, then it would be between 20 to 30 percent. And in this case here, this would already deliver a potential um, of $17,520 per year that could be saved by eliminating the leaks. So as you see, 100 kilowatts, that is not really a big system. So if you have a large factory, then yeah, it could be one or two megawatts even. So the higher the installed yeah, capacity of compressors and the higher the average power, then there will be more saving potential, obviously, um, that can be harvested by eliminating leaks. And yeah, also to give another note, um, other gases such nitrogen, oxygen, and argon, they are even much more expensive than compressed air. So if you have um, yeah, a pressurized gas system there and there are leaks, then they will be yeah, more expensive when you com uh, compare leak by leak. And where do the leaks usually occur? Or which parts are usually faulty? So that is usually not the pipes or the tubes itself. It's the connecting parts between different anim, um, elements. And also one reason for the very high leak rates, in my opinion, is that the compressed air dealers, 
and do the installation, they're responsible for the compressor room and what happens after the compressor room, they're not in charge for anymore. And then it pretty much depends on the company if they're taking care of compressed air leaks and if they're focusing on them. If nothing is done, then the number of leaks will grow time by time. And sometimes we heard from customers that they are still producing the same amount of goods, but they have a problem with their pressure and then they think of you know, adding a new compressor, but that could be also prevented by compressed air leaks in some cases. So yeah, the de demand and supply side here are both, both need to be taken into account. And yeah, the elements that are often leaking are, for example, the maintenance units. Here, a tube was porous, and here it was a rare leak, in my opinion, that a flange connection in the compressor room was not sealed properly, and also the quick couplers and compressed air guns, they leak often the hose clamps, or the steam traps could be also leaking when they're not closing properly anymore, and then compressed air is blowing out of the condensation valve frequently. And how does detecting leaks with ultrasound actually work, or why does it work? So we have our compressor system with a receiver that delivers the air, from the supply side to the point of use where the machines are. And then on the way, there are leaks and the pressurized medium is going from the high pressure to the low pressure and at an overpressure of about 0.3 bar, and turbulences will be generated and that create ultrasound at a frequency of about 40 kilohertz that can be measured very well by ultrasonic leak detectors. The 40 kilohertz are really <clears throat> beneficial because often in production it's quite noisy, but that is in the audible range and the transmitter of the leak detector uses 40 kilohertz, so that one won't be affected by the audible noises of the production area and with the soundproof headset that comes with the device, <clears throat> you can really focus on the sound that is being created by the LD that transfers the 40 kilohertz of the leak down to the audible range and then you hear kind of where the leaks are and then can come closer and find them. Also to have a good combination of what you're targeting on and what you're listening to, we integrated a laser. So then you know, okay, I'm targeting on that point and I hear something and this makes it easier to find the leaks. And when you found it, a few questions will come up. So high, how high are the costs of the individual leak? This is important to know because you need to think of, is it worth fixing the leak or is it more expensive? Is fixing the leak more expensive than the savings that I can achieve? This means usually the company should start top down with the biggest leaks to create, to harvest there the biggest potentials and then go from the top priority leaks to the smaller leaks and therefore it's important to know how high the costs of the leak approximately are. Then at the leakage place you also need to document certain information because if you found for example 50 leaks and you take them with a paper and then you're sitting at your desk or your computer and then you're starting to plan the leak, leak repair then it's quite hard if you don't have the information anymore so this is really critical to make the leak repair the easiest to document the necessary information right at the leakage place. And then obviously it's also interesting to know how high is the total leakage rate. That means the sum of all leaks. And then when you repair the leaks, um, how do you verify the savings? And yeah, how do you know how effective your measures were and if you found most leaks and this is what we try to, yeah, these challenges we try to overcome with the LD500, as you will see in the following presentation. So CS Instruments started developing and producing um, leak detectors in 2006. Then the LD400 came onto the market in 2013. And the LD500 came on the market in 2018. And yeah, just one note. If you already have a device, um, we have published quite many software updates. They are available on our homepage. 
and you can just download them for free and update your device because often customers of ours have good ideas and then if it's possible we implement the features and therefore pretty much everyone can benefit from all our customers and yeah we are continuously working on improving the device so yeah that is something i always recommend my customers to yeah, to keep the software up to date and now we come to the product specific part and we'll do a deep dive for operating the LD500 in the best way. So the first thing always is adjusting the parameters of the LD500 and then uh, detecting all leaks and then evaluating the data. And the last part is the combination of flow measurement and the leak detection. So the first thing you wanna do is uh, to configure it. And in the beginning, you can choose um, unit standard. So the ISO will work with cubic meters and the US will work with um, cubic feet. That only has to be done because this is usually um, country specific and that you won't change after the initial configuration anymore. Then you need to put in the compressed air costs for calculating the annual energy savings. You can also define a currency so you could put in euro, pound or dollars or put in some text. So there you're also free. And then as I already explained, the operating hours are really important. The 18 euros here, they are, a, they are an average value, which is not always true for all companies because it obviously depends on the electricity price and the efficiency of the compressed air system. And this can be put in here. So usually the compressor dealer knows approximately the specific power which would be in the ISO system, kilowatt hours per cubic meter, or in the US system, and kilowatts per 100 CFM. And then you can put in the electricity price and that one will be known. And if you multiply those two numbers, then you will get the electricity costs. And we already saw the cost distribution and we could calculate up the total costs and then the equipment and maintenance would be also yeah, allocated. And then you can tell the device, okay, I am, so this is yeah, also important for the, for the service providers, so they can type in the company or if the customer does it itself, his own company, then define the building. And then the task is to find the leak and the leak tag is just one number that is being attached to each leak that will be increased by one time by time. Here's a short video that shows you the acoustic behavior of the device because that is something you can't really explain by words. And yeah, when you start the big audit, um, you need to think about the idea which sensor should be used. The acoustic trumpet is the standard tool and that one can be used in 80% of the cases. So with that one, it works like a hand lamp. So you hear the leak from a bigger distance and then you come closer and then you follow the specific area and try find the leak. If you have many different elements or the point of use is a bit hard to access, then you could either use a straightening tip, which is the opposite. So the trumpet bundles ultrasound waves and the straighten, straightening tip focuses. So that is the opposite um, function and the gooseneck can be adapted. And then you can stand straight and follow each component in the machine, for example, and then it's really comfortable to find leaks and to measure closely. If it's not possible to come closer, we recommend the usage of the parabolic mirror. This works like a satellite dish. So you have the ultrasound source, which is in that case the leak. And if the ultrasound waves come in parallel to the shape of the parabolic mirror, then they will get reflected into the ultrasonic microphone. And the area of the reflector increases the sensitivity and ultrasound waves, they are not coming in parallel, they won't get reflected into the transmitter. So there it will be 
they are much easier to find and to pinpoint leaks from bigger distances. So if you have um, pipes connected to a roof and that are far away and you cannot really come close easily, the other parabolic mirror is the right tool to follow the part. That one and the gooseneck is connected by the spiral cable. And here's a small overview about the four tools and depending on the distance when they should be used. And um, in the beginning with the LED we started, it was necessary to put in the actual sensor type. Um, nowadays it's possible that the sensor types that they um, get selected by the device automatically. So the acoustic trumpet and the focus tip, they already get chosen automatically and we will um, soon launch also the intellig intelligent parabolic mirror and an intelligent gooseneck. And then we already come to the most important part, that is the interface for finding the leaks. So here we have the level that is depending on the sound pressure of the ultrasound that is produced by the leak. And that one is used as well as the distance to the leak and the system pressure to quantify the loss in liters per minute or cubic feet per minute. And then the costs are cal calculated up per year, as I already showed. Here you can see the leak tag, and here are some yeah, buttons. Here you can store the leak, here you enter the parameter button, and here you can um, activate the laser. And what I always recommend my users is you can operate the device in the auto mode, and there it will keep the, the level in the valid range. So you always need to make sure that the level is between 20 and 80 in that case. So 20 is the lower edge and 80 is the upper edge that it can measure in between. But you can also change it manually and increase or decrease the sensitivity. So if you decrease the sensitivity, the device will turn uh, quieter and ultrasound in that range, for example, here 60 to 120 that was launched together with the intelligent tools, there it doesn't or it cancels out ultrasound below the edge of 60 dBs. That means here it's possible to decrease ultrasound ambient noises effectively to make sure um, that you can concentrate on, on the sound and find the leaks the easiest if you have problems in some special applications where it might occur that you have some interfering ultrasound. So there decreasing the sensitivity always makes sense and then also coming closer and then it is possible to find the leaks very quickly. So usually I start in the auto mode and then when I see, okay, I want to change it to yeah, change the area, the device is uh, creating sound on the headphones and then I play around manually. But if you have the de device in your hand and you have an ultrasound source and you play around, then that will be very easy. So that is a bit <laughs> hard to explain if you're not on site, but due to Corona, it's not that easy. And yet yeah, this is what I have already explained. Um, in the beginning of 2021, we launched the intelligent trumpet, as I already said, with the two new sensitivity levels. And also we have integrated and laser distance module. And with that one, it's possible to measure the distance from the tool to the leak that is used for the cost quantification because that is yeah, a very critical parameter. If you put in a uh, yeah, wrong distance, then yeah, the, the quality of the quantification will decrease, obviously, because you need the parameter distance to know um, what the level means. And this is the parameter part I spoke about. So here you see you're in the automatic mode, the acoustic trumpet is connected. And if you activate distance by laser, then this part here will be locked. And then it will use the distance that is being measured by the laser module and actualize it as the, the distance if you have already the device. So you could use an external distance meter. That one would give you the distance 5.34 meters and then you select it manually and then you would achieve the same, but now it is done automatically by the device. 
also what I spoke about a little is um, also yeah, the ultrasound waves, they can be reflected as you can see here. So sometimes you hear a leak at a point where there is no compressed air pipe or tube or whatever. And then you need to think, okay, this is, or this might be a um, reflection. Then you can decrease the sensitiv sensitivity as I already explained have a look where is the part that I want to check and then come closer or to turn the device and measure directly on the part here and it will pick up then also in the area here. And yeah, in some rare cases, yeah, it is recommended to use the gooseneck or the focus tip and then you can measure very closely and follow the specific parts even in very, very harsh environments to find the leak in the most efficient way. And if you found the leak, you can specify the leakage place because for the leak repair, you need to plan a route for which leaks should be fixed and in which room do I go first. So knowing where the leak actually is, is quite vital. And for each leak, you can also um, document some additional information. So you can define the leaking element or the root cause for the leak. You can define a measure you could define a spare part. There we made some initial suggestions, but it's like an internal database that you can increase audit by audit. So if something is missing, you can type it in over the touch screen and then it will be in the database and you can use it further on. I will show that quickly in the, in, in the simulation. And you can also specify whether or not the leak can be repaired under pressure. So is there an isolation valve in front of the machine so that you don't you know, interfere the production or if you're working on the main pipe system and keeping the production running is always priority, <laughs> priority number one, then yeah, it gets a bit com more complicated to schedule the leak repair than sometimes the companies say if we have a shutdown or if we are maintaining our system on the Christmas week then we yeah, tackle also critical leaks. But yeah, still it's important to know that they are there and then you need to know um, how you need to plan the leak fix because as I said, this is really difficult if you don't save that information at the leakage place and you can also add a um, comment. Then you see a screen where there is all information in one place and if you click now on yes, all the data that you used here and here, they will be stored on the internal SD card. And then you start with the next leak and you do that from the compressed air um, production or the compressor station. You follow the pipe system and then go to the end users where you will find the most leaks. And then you should be able to pretty much find all leaks. And if you're all done, you went through the full production area, then you can export the data onto the USB stick in the device under export leakage data. You can select the start, starting time and the end time and then all leaks in between will be saved um, on the USB drive and that can be used for importing the data um, into the CS leak report software. The leak report software dashboard looks the following. So there are different and functionals available. Inside companies, there are the specific leakage data depending on which company you type in into the LD500. Under data import, you can import the data from the USB stick. The import project is for, if you have two employees working on the leak repair and fixing, for example, they could share projects um, by each other and here it would be possible to export one project and then to import it and then you have it on both computers. Under database you can create security backups in case there are some issues happening with a computer for example so that the data are not lost. Under profile you can specify your own um, contact information. This is important for the service providers so they can type in their name and yeah, their contact data and add a logo. The license is yeah, necessary for using the software. So with one license, you can activate 
two softwares and then you can use it um, free of charge anymore. And yeah, there we also implement quite often updates and those you can do automatically if you're connected to the computer and under recycling bin deleted objects um, are saved. So if you saved some uh, deleted something that you didn't want it to, then you could go to the recycling bin and restore it so that the data is not lost in the first place. And if we click on companies, we will enter the list of companies and this is how it could look like for a service provider that does the audit at many different companies. So you will see the company name, you see in how many buildings you were in total. That is also depending on the data that you use in the leak reporter and you'll see the number of projects, which are the imports. So one import always creates one project. And if you click on the eye here, then you will go to the detail view for the company and you will see all projects. So they have a name. You will see the first and the last date of the leak. You will see the total number of the leaks and then the total leakage rate depending on the unit that you use. So in that case, it would be liters per minute. Here it would be CFM, so there you're very flexible, but usually in one country, you only use one unit system. You can also edit the buildings and here you can edit the master data of your company and also type in the contact data of your customer, for example, if it was done by an audit provider. And if you click on the eye here, then you will enter the leak list of the project and here you can filter the leaks depending on their location or their place. You can sort them after the leak tag the leakage rate or the costs per year. You have an overview here. And if you click on the eye, then you will see the detail view and all the information that you used in the LD500 will be present here. So the first bar or the first column is for, yeah, for the leakage place, so the company, the building, the place, the leak tech and the project you put it in. And the second one is for the cost quantification. You see all the parameters. You could change something if you recognized that it was in the wrong way later. You can yeah, define a priority and tell your maintenance guys or team, start with the yeah, priorities that are high, then go to the mediums and the low. We, we keep open because eventually the repair won't be are beneficial because the leaks are though so so small that not much air is coming out and then keeping them in some cases is the better option than fixing them especially if you need to order expensive spare parts or you interfere with production then usually usually they those stay but then you need to make sure that it's smaller leaks and that they are not obviously quite expensive and wasting a lot of energy because then <laughs> there's nothing left. And the last part is exactly for that. So here you can see the parameters that you use in the LD500. You can also change them later. You can create a node and here you can change the status. And if the leak was repaired, then you could also document when it was done and who did it. And this information then uh, yeah, can be saved for the leak. And then you can also go through the whole project with all leaks that we saw here. So we could start at leak one and then go through it and yeah, click through each leak. And when we are happy with all the data, then we click on create report and then we get a PDF or if we click on CLS, we get an Excel file and the PDF file will look like this. So the first page is a cover sheet. There you will have the customer contact data and the auditor company data. Then you have the project master data and the measuring parameters. And here, down here, you get the results of so the leaks that you found and the ones that you fixed. And then you have the ratio here. So this could be a, a good document to verify to an ISO 50001 auditor what you did in terms of compressed air leak detection and repair. So here he can see on one page what happened for that audit in that time. 
and afterwards you get a list of each league with the picture that was being taken by the early 500 that you can also change to a different picture if you wanted to in the league place and then you have all the information and yeah that is the report that you could give out to your maintenance team and then they yeah work on the leaks and fix them and then yeah then we can have a look at the combination of flow rate and measuring um, so we recommend that you we already spoke about leak detection the documentation the report and the leak repair but in the beginning it's always interesting to know what is the situation before the measures that were being taken and it's always important to know what is the situation after the measures that were being taken. So in that case here, we measured after a receiver the flow rate of a compressed air system. And we saw, okay, at that time here, the company was not producing, they were maintaining the machines and so on. But the flow rate that was produced by the compressed air system was still 350 cubic meters per hour. Uh, and at that time they were not producing. And if you um, they are compared to the average flow rate of the complete compressed air system over the production time, the company had about 600 cubic meters per hour. So this means they had a lot of saving potential and there was above 50% that measurement was being taken in, in South Africa. So they had a lot of savings potential. There was not only leaks, but also they had blowing applications open um, frequently and they had quite some problems with um, their dust bags. But anyways, the flow measurement is great to show, okay, how much air is going out of the compressed air system, even though we are not producing. And after the actions, this rate should go down to verify the, the savings. And now, I want to click quickly go through the simulation. So we still have some time. So this is how the main menu of the device looks. And I already, as I already told you, the first thing is the configuration. So here you can change between cubic meters and cubic feet. You can select here a different unit. You can change the cost and type in yeah, the specific power and the electricity price. Or if you know the compressed air costs from your compressed air deal or something, you can also put it in directly. Then we have the measuring place. We have the parameters here that can be changed for quantifying the leaks. Here is the export where you export the leaks on the USB drive and this here is the main menu for fixing the leaks. So here you can click on the laser, you can go through the each sensitivity steps. And the new functionalities that came on the market is the automatic tool recognition. So here it will recognize, okay, it's a trumpet. And if you click now on laser, it will measure the laser and use it as a distance because this is a visualization. We yeah, change the values that we see that something is happening. So that would be the case if you target with the leak detector in different areas, then the distance would obviously also change depending on your point. If you're standing still on one point, then it will stay the same. And then it is used for the cost quantification. And let's imagine we found the leak. So the measurement place is at CS Instruments, we are in building one, and the place is the compressor room. We had a flange, so we could select here the flange connection. The measure could be change seal. Yeah. The status is we did not repair it on site, and we cannot compare it, uh, repair it under pressure. And the comment could be. Um, ASAP and we have here the possibility to use um, intelligent browsing kind of and then it shows all the yeah, all the selections um, that we already used and now 
all this information is stored on the internal SD card if it was the actual device because it's only the visualization we cannot store it. But this is mainly how the device works. We try to keep it as easy as possible and that the device leads the user through the whole process to, to help him to get the most out of it. This was the presentation. I hope the information were meaningful to you. Um, after the presentation, we will send you the recording as well as the PDF sheet. <laughs> Sorry for disabling the chat, but we had 290 registrations. And then if the people are sometimes leaving and coming back and all the people are posting something on the chat, it's quite hard to handle. And to make sure that you get the right um, answers to your questions, um, you can send me an email and write down your questions, eventually the slides that you where the questions came up and then I'll give my best, best to answer your questions as quickly as possible. We will send you an email with all that information as well as my contact data. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed the presentation. If any questions came up, please send me an email or we could also schedule a second meeting. Thanks for participating.